It's another exciting episode of The Source of OC. My name is OC. Yes, every other week, I right here on YouTube, I bring you guys amazing people to just sit down and have uh, the best conversations ever. Remember to follow the channel. It's called The Source of OC and also at OC Swab across all social media platforms. Uh, so my guest today, the boss, hey. Ellie. Oh, so I do, man. I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. I on, know. I know. It's sauce. always it's always great conversation every time we get on. Thank you. Know? You're doing this finally. <laughs> I know. I know. The conversation. We we've, <laughs> we've spoken about this over and over again, and I was yes. like, you know, I was going to do it. I was going to do it. And yes. yeah, you know, yes. yeah, resources. I'm mindset excited. I know you know yeah. I think I think you probably felt like it was a low hanging fruit mm -hmm. like ah, I can do it just, yeah I just do it you know and I guess we're just chasing all the other, all the other things, things. Yeah, but yeah, thank you for having me on the show it's great yeah why I wanted why I wanted you here was because um, we have a lot of shared history and uh, you know I, I can't tell my story without you being being a part of it because yeah. uh, you know from the jump uh, you, you've always been there you know the intersecting part between hip hop and Afro beats and you know, the industry that we have today, you've consistently just been there, you know, and everything. So, um, the Thoroughbreds, that was mm. the first time I heard about you. Um, I just, you know the funny funny story, like, when I was growing up, my little brother was actually the music head, not me. Wow. Yeah. He, he's, yeah, you know, he went on to be in the military, you know, he's doing his own stuff right now. He's in the States. Boy, when I was growing up, I remember when it used to be Philip Trimmel, uh, Philip Trimmel. Music and Africa. Uh, Music Africa, and yeah. uh, you know, we get to see videos on AIT back in the day. So my brother would always run out and say, oh, they're showing this new Lord of Ajasa video. Oh, have you heard? Oh, wow. So he would be the one that would collect all the music or anything. So I guess that's where the influence for me, you know, to, uh, you know, just get into music and everything. So I remember the first video of yours I saw, you're coming down the staircase, you were in the suit and you took it off. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was you go. Ooh, and go. Yeah, uh, I remember. How yeah. how long ago was that? <sighs> that was 2007. Jeez, yeah, I just got into uni. <laughs> <laughs> I just got into uni, and uh, the talk around uni then was, you know, you're this guy that was a rapper, and you know, you're a banker, and yeah. you know, you just found a way to just, you yeah. know, just achieve that mix and everything. For so me, for, for you though. Um, that early, that early start, especially when rap wasn't as celebrated as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So why did you even want to be a rapper then? I mean, you had you just got out of uni and you had a fantastic job in the bank. Yeah. So why did you want to rap? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll rewind us a bit. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Inugu, Coast City, mm -hmm. um, small town in the southeast. Um, my older brother came back from from school one day and had a tape, like a Maxell tape. Yeah, like I remember a, those Maxell. Yes. They were the best. Oh, the top of the line. They were amazing. Top of the line, yeah. 90 minutes. Maxell 90 minutes, tape, yeah. You know, and he handed it to me. I was like, listen, I just went to to music garden. Music garden is a local music store mm -hmm. in, in in situated in Namdi Azikiwe Stadium in Nuguden. So he said I made a tape. So I need you to listen to some of the records and I need to hear something. You know, so he we popped in into the deck and then he pressed play. And the first record I heard was um, I think I want somebody mm -hmm. to love me from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was Heavy D and the boys. Yeah. And then from there, we moved on to another record from KRS One, then Queen Latifah, Eric B and Rakim, Kid and Play. So I'm like, what, what, what kind of music is this? Why are they speaking really fast mm -hmm. on, on, on a beat? Because that wasn't yeah. what I grew up on. We grew up on a lot of pop music, mm -hmm. a lot of reggae, mm -hmm. you know, and and eventually that's it became mine. Yeah. Like every night I would just pop it in yeah. and just be listening to you know, just then it was called rapping. Yeah. Yeah. So I just kept listening to it and it, it spoke so rapidly over the beats and I was trying to write the lyrics and cram it. And from there I just developed a strange a strange connection with this incredible art form. Mm -hmm. You know, and from there I started to now go to the stores myself. I dealt with my mother. <laughs> like she had like stacks of tapes yeah. that you know she would record from for everywhere. She had all kinds of albums, mm -hmm. you know, country music. And you and you know the funny thing about tapes where you could dub and you could dub over them. And I was dubbing I over know, them. Yeah. Then she had some metal <laughs> tapes that if you dubbed over you would still hear yeah. the original. The original recording yeah, on that. yeah. I kept wiping her tape. And she kept looking at her tape bag. I was like, something is wrong. Tapes are missing. You know, and, and it was just me running to the record store, mm -hmm. recording, you know, hip hop. So as and I carried it on into university. Mm -hmm. And then went to University of Nigeria and Soka and became like a proper hip hop artist. I was mm -hmm. performing in school, traveling to other unis to perform, yeah. you know, and just kind of created my own local notoriety from there. So, and, but it was such a, a, an alien art then. A lot of people didn't 
I couldn't relate with a lot of people because people just wanted to sing. Yeah, true. You know, and then you come through with this hip hop rap thing, and I carried on till final year, graduated, oh. I came over to Lagos for youth service, still rapping. Yeah. You know, and it was when I got to Lagos, and Lagos was like New York because. For, you know, like when you live in a place like Alabama yeah, or yeah. Minnesota, are you, are you, are you come to New York. You come to New York. Yeah, you just be like this. The bright know, lights, like, everything. What is, yeah. What is this? Right? <laughs> so we kept looking at Lagos. Like if 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 we could just get there, mm -hmm. then your career would just pop. Mm -hmm. So and that's how I ended up in Lagos, and for my youth service, and I've been here ever since. Ever then. since you never looked back. Yeah. So that's that's my little journey <laughs> with, know, with this art. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really it's been really impressive, big ball. Thank and it you. seems like a lot has changed now. You know, from how we used to call you music back in the day to what it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, it was you know terrestrial TV used to play a huge part. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, then cable TV, you know, oh, and, yes. and all of that. Then I remember how I would stay up and watch prime time prime time jams. Jams. Uh, ah, you know, with Keke, Keke and D One. You know, do their thing. Um, you know, I watch uh, Sober Sprite with Lisa back with in the Lisa, day. With Lisa, Clapperboard, yeah, Clapperboard Clapper TV. You know, and yeah. with everybody just, you know, little, just doing their own things to just yeah. build the industry in their own little way and True. to, uh, you know, where to where it is right now. So off the, off, um, the camera, we're having a conversation as regards, uh, you know, Cartier and, you know, uh, all those rappers. And it was, <laughs> you know, there was an era where, I, I want to call it the capital era. And I and yeah. I say this and, and I'm like it's I respect every video director that's out right there, but there's the I think Clarence Peters is the holy grail. And he is. He's he not is. he's not um <laughs> he's not he doesn't really like he does videos every once in a while. Then I saw the Fast and Chicken video and I oh, smiled. You know why I laughed at it? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, like you know, it's, it was like Jay-Z and God did. Yes. Yeah, it's so I, I'm like, oh yeah, OG needed come and show the, show yes. the other guys that okay, it's absolutely. You, so the way it it's reeled me in, the way he tells stories, stories with his videos and everything. And I was sitting down the other day, I was watching I'm um, Imposter by Kamar Aristocrat because he used to shoot, and I'm like, how can a video ten years ago still look this dope? True. You know, shows you know the quality of his talent, and you had a hand in. Oh, yes. In uh, you know the shift the that shift. we saw in Capital. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I met Clarence on the set for Styley. I remember Styley. Yes. I remember, um, uh, geez, um, Jimmy Jack, uh, Jimmy Jack. Jimmy Elijah uh, Mode, Mode, uh, Mode 9. Yeah, yes. yeah, Mode 9, yes. yeah, I remember. Yes. Produced by Joe Kenny. I know. Um, bro, I where do I start? The city of hustlers, everybody in the hurry. Traders, Traders and customers. Traders and customers. Fuckers get know? picked on ah. a regular. If you're not smart, you go part with your cellular. cellular. <laughs> you drive in, I suspect you check your rent. Man, everybody jeez, read that, I, know, read that. I know, I know, you I know, man, I know. When, when, when I, I came back, because I relocated after some years and moved to England. Okay. Lived in England for about two and a half, three years, mm -hmm. and came back. When I came back, I came straight into the onto the stylist set. Okay. So my friend, my very good friend, Ella Jo from How the Thoroughbreds. Ella is good. Okay. Ella is a businessman. No, right. He's not rapping. He's not rapping. I'm anymore. angry. He did put out <laughs> albums, you know, because know. you know he sounded so epic and he mm -hmm. still does. He still but does, yeah. He has a little pop belly now. And, <laughs> and, and, and so he. He, I got on set and he was like, Do you know, see that guy over there in the little dreadlocks? Mm -hmm. That's that Clarence guy I've been telling you. And it's like he's a huge fan of the thoroughbreds. And so I got on set and Clarence was pretty much doing everything. So he was supervising the guys painting the set. So yeah. all that graffiti at the at background, the back, yeah, it was him. He was calibrating the camera. So I'm like, this guy's energy is crazy, man. He's, he's in every part of production. Mm -hmm. So we we got, Ella introduced us mm -hmm. and Klaus was like, I'm going to do some work with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know when, but I'm a huge fan. Let's speak soon. Um, fast forward to a couple of months later and um, I'm sitting down somewhere and I'm, I'm talking with a friend of mine, Ayo Banjo. We are common friends, mm -hmm. me, he, and Clarence. And Ayo is like, so Eli, what do you have to do? Like, what? now you're back from England. How do you, you know, make, make your music pop out? And I was just speaking. Then Clarence looked at me and said, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but what can I, how can we partner? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I don't know. I have records. I don't have videos. You know, so he was like, okay, like I like this, your you go Undo record, you know, I like it. Mm -hmm. Can I put, I, I just signed a female artist called Kel. I remember Kel. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. I have a producer 
friend of mine suspect. called Suspect. You know what Suspect is going to be? First time I met Suspect, I was running a magazine when I was back in uni. Oh, wow. It was called Suave. <laughs> and so, funny story, I came all the way from Benin to interview Kel uh, because I was working on my hostel the first, my first year and they used to have this um, in like the waiting area. They used yeah. to have TVs and I saw Kel's video. And I was like, oh, pretty dope and everything. Oh, so wow. found Osage on Facebook. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah found Osage on Facebook, sent her a message. That, Shout oh, out to love, Sags. Yeah, Shout I would to love Sags. to interview, you know, Kel. Came all the way from being skinny as hell, you oh, know, wow. interviewed Kel and Suspect. And Suspect told me something that sticks with me to the very day that he said, whatever you put your, whatever you, you put effort in, yeah. with time to expand. Oh, yeah. And he That's just true. he just stuck with me. Little and, you know, yeah. philosophical and, yeah. dude, hardworking dude. Mm-hmm. Suspect is responsible for so many every great thing that happened for me sonically. Yeah, he always used to. He was always there. He was like he was like the young guru, like what young guru is to Jay Z. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. he was mm-hmm. to me. Like he would record me. He would mix, master, rearrange Everything, my records. Yeah. You know, give me a lot of ideas and. So that's how Clarence and I, we did the You Go Wound record, yeah. Kukel and Suspect. Mm-hmm. And it, I and remember the, he had a remix as well. It, that's the yeah, remix. Yeah. It was a remix mm-hmm. and then it just, it, just, yeah. it just blew up. And and then I now won the SMVAs. Uh, the Nas came yeah, for Yeah, the Nas came, came Jeez, for how do I know? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you know, I like to call you a middle child. <laughs> Be- because the truth is that I can bet you were in the backseat when Biggie was shot. <laughs> How Just, do I? I remember Big, it was a Musa. It was a Musa. Yeah, center. it was a Musa that you won. I remember yeah. this like it was yesterday. Because I feel like you you saw the dial phone. Yeah, then I did. You saw the mobile. phone. I saw the mobile phone. I saw the uh, war units for the ACs. I saw I saw cassette tapes. I saw the discman. I saw the walkmans. I Absolutely. saw. I've seen everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So like I, I grew up in a very fantastic generation. You know, crazy. It gives me a lot of insight. Too crazy. As well. mm-hmm. So that, that's our clients tonight. So they, 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 they kind of got, I, and I kind of got sucked into the wall, the capital wall. Then clients was trying to come up. The first proper, proper video clients did, like for the mainstream, mm-hmm. was um, Sasha Zadara. I remember. I yeah. think that was the first video that she did in a while. Because if you remember before Adara, yes. Yes. Uh, she'd, uh, you know, a couple cameos in Tribesman Records. Yes, and the Tribes and Records, part, yeah. of, uh, part of the um, lyrics in Adara was, uh, you know, yes. how many years, only one, only one only single. Only one single, uh, yes. You know, no video. Yes. Yeah, then no she direction. goes, but you, gone. Then, but she go, the, 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 well, you hear me though, in Nimo Washi or something. Yes, remember, yes, remember yes. That. Remember Keep that. your head up to yeah, the yeah. sky. Then you have Nito had Cameos, Kills had a cameo. Nato Kills, Jasmine Olofin. Jasmine Olofin, all the, everybody from yes. Stop. Um, I tell you, GT, the guitar man. So down yeah. at the other that used to be Jade's Palace, if oh, you remember. Yes, I remember. So Jade's Palace used to be like the bougie club. Mm-hmm. So I, again, I was, if my mom knew that half the time I was in Unibet, I was always in Lagos. You were right? Lagos. I was, I was just so, I, for somebody that grew up in Lagos, I, you know, I saw this place spring out. It was always something about, you know, the other side of Lagos that always used to fascinate me. So yeah. came, came, and I think it, I I can't remember, but I remember it was there was I think it was even Nato's album it listening. It was Nato's listening. Yes, at Jay's yeah. Palace. Then um Jats was playing. Oh yeah. Then um he played Rock Boys. Rock Boys just came out. Was it yeah. Rock Boys he played? Then Olisa and Asika just and Ubi just literally just bought champagne for everybody. Oh yeah. So it was the first time <laughs> I like I had a bottle to myself. Yeah, but, you know, I was b- going back to Benin in a big way. You know, we <laughs> we just line. we just for my guys. Oh like, my god, bro! I was in Lagos. I drank oh champagne. My god. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, so I see them now. You know, they come on my show and I interview them and I tell them these stories. I tell them like for real, for real. Yeah. So that's you know. Then it's it in my mind. I'm like I miss the way the industry was back in the day, though. You know, when I when I I met Obi at, at Ladbroke Groove. Mm-hmm. Ladbroke Groove is just adjacent to Shepherd's Bush. I know, just near, very uh, very close to Maidovale. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's your, yeah. your map is intact. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I met Obi in Notting Hill Carnival. It was crazy. It was going. First person I spotted was Olisa Adibwa. And yeah. I saw him, he had the do rag on. <laughs> and I'm like, so I was waving, but too many people, he couldn't see me. Mm-hmm. Then I now spotted DJ T. He was like, hey, what are you doing here? I haven't seen him in years. Then he yeah. pulled me up and I met Obi. So behind Obi, LD, the Don, mm-hmm. Ike Chuku, yeah. the entire squad, um, um, Storm and Tembo. So, yeah. And Obi said, shoot me, you know, and he had the Storm t-shirt on. Yeah. And everybody had that in Storm with Trust with the, t-shirt. Yeah, with, with the, the fist and everything. And yeah. the shield. And he said, mm-hmm. you need to come home. You need to come home. There's a lot going on in Nigeria. And Obi was one of the reasons why I just 
said, okay, UK has been real. Yeah, I'm, I'm going back to Nigeria. And, so I know, packed it up and, and came back. Yeah. So when I came back, I was part of that whole um, vibe when Adara was being shot. Mm -hmm. that, you know, I had talks of getting signed. Yeah. But a lot of people also got talks, had talks with Storm then. Mm -hmm. Storm was a lifestyle machine. That was everybody came by. Yeah. P Square, Mo Hits. Everybody. And then they were producing Big Brother. Yeah. So, and a bunch of other shows too as well. Yeah. A Doctor bunch of Squatters, other shows. All uh, yeah, shows, a bunch yeah. of other shows too so, as well. So they had their hands in you, know, you, yeah. you know, literally just almost everything. Absolutely. And talking about, you know, uh, you people getting signed and everything. Um, I sat in my room, then I had a roommate then, his name was Greg. Yeah. Uh, so um when we were like, okay, when we got out of school, like one of the things I wanted to do was to try to see how we could start like record stores that sold original CDs. Oh. You know, understand I found you know just find a way to just remove a lava from the mix and everything and back it like there was really there was it, the internet was there but there was no information there nah, so it was nah. still he, you know hearsay and what was going on in the industry you know at the time and everything and so and most times you hear um, you know, people going to Alaba and those uh, those guys, the T Joes, yeah. you know, just sat Ike down. The Don, Ike the Don, Obino, Obino, and they were the ones actually just calling the shots and everything. Yeah. And you know, and I remember Timaya being having one of the big deals at the time. Yeah. You know, they then, gave him a bag. I know. And he shook the whole industry. I know. Yeah. Then how everybody decided to benchmark, and how the guys that were, um, what's it called right now? Um, I promoted P Square, give them, give him, give them SUVs. SUVs. I think they were Sequoias at the yes, time. Yes. I, so it's you know, and now I look back and you know it's all DSPs, and in my mind I'm just like these new kids who don't know anything about Alaba no, mixes no, or you know no. uh, Lucky Phone Splash. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but see that that's way above there. I know. Alaba was. I took a bus to Alaba, mm -hmm. and when I got into Alaba, I stopped over to see um, Obino. Mm -hmm. I went straight to his shop. Yeah. He had like about 100 boys in a tiny shop. They were loading up CDs to send to the east. So, and I'm like, where's Obino? They're like, that's him, the light-skinned guy. <laughs> yeah. So the guy was seated there. Um, he was eating abacha, yeah. you know, and, and fish. And then I came to him, he was like, mm-hmm, you're the one that's been disturbing me. I said, yes. He said, okay, sit down. He said, Oyegwe, in Igbo, it means put put the music on. Mm -hmm. So it took my disc and, and slipped it in, and and he listened first record. He he didn't move. He was just eating, eating first track, second track, third track. My third track, he said, switch switch it off. What are you in this business for? With oil all over his mouth and his hands. And I said, um, I'm a rapper. I'm trying. He said, mm -hmm. rap no they sell. So you know, it's, it's, I'll speak it in Igbo and I'll interpret it mm -hmm. for you. Iga makwa kisi me, unless I go agu bogi, you go know, as in you should know how you stir up the soup, or else you would die of hunger in Lagos. So there and then, I took all of my amazing boom bap records, amazing soulful records, and he went out through the window. He said, I can't sell this. He said, all oh, the rap, rap, rap. So see, look at look how the city is moving to the east. It's flavor, it's this gospel record. But look at all these other ones, the rap records, they're not selling. So how do we reconcile? You understand? I left, I, left, I said, thank you. Can I have my music? He gave it back to me. I said, thank you. So I'll stay in touch. So when I was leaving, I had another guy called Ike the Don. I remember, and the logo on Ike the Don CD is where it was a microphone, I yes. think on a CD. And it's like, like Jesus. Ossia, Ossia, terrible. <laughs> I know. I your, know. Your, your, your memory I know, is crazy. Yeah, man. I remember. That was I Ike. Yeah. So I walked into Ike's office mm -hmm. and it felt like another side of, like a corporate office inside Alaba. Inside Alaba, yeah. Then he was distributing Asha's first album. Okay. Um, rooftop MCs mm -hmm. and a couple of other people. So I sat down. And you know what he said? He said, play the music. I played it, I was like, mm, nice, uh, but she, they were apple. <laughs> but, sorry, can you look at those, that st those stack of CDs over there? Could you bring them? So I brought them, I said, these are compilation CDs. They're compilations, like everybody's hit record on one, on one CD, CD, like yeah. mixtapes. Mm -hmm. Look at the first five records. Tell me the guy, tell me the guy that's featured on all of them. Mm -hmm. I read, I said, Terry G. He said, go and look for him. Mm -hmm. and make a record with him so back. that you can unlock, unlock the, streets. the streets. And I, I think that's what gave birth to like work on, right? Absolutely. That's, 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 <laughs> the video, the, the video was so street because I remember it there was, was a scruffy looking chair. Was, you understand? Oh my you God. know, everything about- I was about, scared to see on that chair. I know. That, we that, found that, it in the hood. I get like, Oh my God. Like everything about, sorry, I still remember April got like, you know, you know, at the back of my head and it yeah. was almost like Clarence Peters always knew how to unlock the grittiness of those videos. Oh, 
Oh, no, he didn't. You know, he then didn't. Aipo Gong came out and, you know, you were everywhere. Then, you know, it became, I was. Oh, see, I yeah. was, and I couldn't even handle it. Like, I, I was getting calls from every Birmingham, yeah. New York. I didn't have a manager. Okay. So I was trying to... You know, and I had a day job. Yeah. Because in all of this, OC, I always worked. Okay. I always had a job because I've never been the guy that relied solely on music. On music, yeah. My mom's voice is like a loop in, in my head. Mm -hmm. When you get to Lagos, get a job. Don't waste your university degree. You are, this music thing can't really sustain you. Yeah. You know, and motherly advice, I stuck to it. Yes, and yeah. I always had from banking right up to when I came back from England mm -hmm. and I got into Ultima Studios yeah. to become a production manager for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Millionaire and Project yeah. Fame. So I'd always worked. Oh, see, do you know how, they, how I got the name Oga Boss? Yeah. Hmm. So I walked into Rhythm FM. I can, I can say it's station names on the show, right? Yeah, sure. I walked into Rhythm. I was late for an interview. So usually when I would go to interviews, I will pack the hip-hop clothing mm -hmm. in a bag and just head off, mm -hmm. get there, switch the clothing, yeah. and then go do the interviews, yeah. then switch back to my banking outfit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I couldn't do that because I was running late. late yeah. So when I walked in and somebody just said, hmm, are you the artist or the record label owner? Because yeah, yeah. I had a suit yeah, oh, on yeah. and a tie. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm the artist. He said, what's your name? I said, Evo Bliss. He says, hmm. this one now, got boss. Who was that? Double Chief. This was, this was, it wasn't KLM. It was a DJ. Oh, OK. Yeah, it was one of the, 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 the one of the, it wasn't yeah. Midas. It yeah. was, it was, I it was think Midas, it was KLM, KLM um, Tommy. It wasn't Tommy. Jeez. Um, it wasn't Just Tommy. humility. Your memory serves me right. Yeah, there. you know. I, I think it was. I think it was. It was. It was. Kellen. Yeah, Kellen. So yeah, Kellen was always funny guy. Yeah. So then once I, then once all, I heard it, yeah, I, I just stuck there. Right? Boss. Then so, also, I remember the first time we met. It was you still a rhythm as well. <laughs> yes. Then it was, it was um, big time. God bless so, Yeah, I know. Then Seaside. I was I was doing my NYC. Yes. And he was like, hey, yeah, you guys should know each other and everything. Yes. And, and he was, was program was... director. Then he put me on. Like yeah. I say this every time. Like I'm getting so emotional talking about it right now that I'd not seen anybody that has so selfless like him before. To be honest, like True. True. so. Oh, see, even when you, even when you moved yeah. to, to the beach. Yeah, and he, he yeah. I told him I wanted to move, and he said, you know, he told me to go. He said, yeah, do it. Then we'll find time to catch up. He would send me messages and say, uh, how he's so proud of me and everything. Yeah. Then yeah. I, I'm just, then um, I think a month before he died, I ran into him, he was staying near me, though. Then I ran into him, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'd come see you. And never really found time to do that. Then... I just, the one day I tweeted about how his voice shaped, you know, an entire generation and he saw it and he sent me a message. I'm just glad that, you know, I just didn't give him his flowers when he was still alive and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, he introduced me to Frank Ocean, a bunch of, you know, Burning Boy, a bunch of people. And yeah. I say, you know, um, we can't really tell the story of, you know, hip hop and, um, uh, the movements in, in Lagos yeah. without, you know, people like Big Time. Big, yeah. Big, yeah. Who, who have consistently just selflessly just put people on. Yeah. Yeah. So like, Biggie, was, Biggie was selfless is such yeah, an understatement. Yeah, it was, such a, it was a wrong way of I putting know. it. Oh, see, he was... It was kind. How could a man be so kind? How could his heart be so huge? Never held a grudge. Never. Oh, see, I, oh, see I'll go to Biggie and I'll... I, I wouldn't go to him for rotation. Sometimes yeah. I'll just stop. Stop by, yeah. Just, just to see him, just so that we could find. He's like, you need to walk harder. You need to walk more. You need to recover. I'm like, Biggie, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. This space is not supporting the genre enough. Mm -hmm. I have I have a family to feed. And he's like, mm -hmm. bro, let's just go and drink a beer. Forget about the music, yeah. you know? Also, for, even when I was at my coldest, even when my career was in a complete state of inertia, always play the music. Always play the music. I was such a huge part of the playlist. Yeah. And when you now move to the beat, he said, Osi is gone. He would call you a full name. Osikela, yeah. Osikela, he said, Osi is going to open the next branch. We need to spread out. Yeah. So for him, he felt like you moving to the beat was, was an opportunity was like an to be able. Because beats at the, you know, beat at the time, you know, came with that, um, 
London flow. Absolutely. And, you know, so it was an opportunity to just unlock a new market. So I remember, um, you know, getting to the beats, introducing new artists to the playlist, Makilla, that's Tokyo Maka was brother. Yes, yes. Um, Biggie put me on Makilla too as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, a bunch of people, Labzilla Wild, ah. a lot of people that Biggie put me on that I, you know, I, you know, extended the same courtesy, you know, to the beats and everything. Yeah. It's why till today, yeah. I, you know, I, I'd always tell, you know, the presenters that I work with and the people that, you know, I meet and say, I almost always consistently try to use use our platforms and just try to put as many people as True. we can on that because that's how we leave legacies and everything. Well, see, the first time I heard about Major, you you, you put me on Major Bank. Yeah. So a funny story. I used to um, Major Banks was signed to a record label called Mogul Music. Mogul. So Mogul Music was owned by Uyo Makaro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uyo Makaro was four years my senior in secondary school. Oh wow. So I came to Lagos to. I was running Swab Magazine at the time, so I was looking for ads. So somebody gave me a list of ad agencies. Oh, so, wow. so he used to run DM2. DM2 yes. was in Dolphin. Yeah. So I sauntered him. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, I see called him, I was like, Senior Uyi. <laughs> you get, <laughs> and he looked at me, and he was like, what are you doing here? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I'm hustling. I'm trying to get ads for my magazine. So he gave me Mocha phone, I remember. Oh, wow. Paid me like 170000 in like 2008. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was a shit that was, lot, of that money, was a right? lot of money. I took Associated Airlines back to Benin. Outside, no money to go in, man. Never. Then, oh so when I left, God. and um, my first years in at Beat, I was living in Ikoi at Osborne. Osborne. So Osborne, so I was Uyi's neighbor. Then Uyi would say, Uyi was like, oh, he's trying to sign this record label and blah, blah, blah. So I used to, I was his A&R, literally. Oh, wow. So all the music, we sat down, Roads, I did this and everything. Then you know with um, Tycoon, Tycoon, um, yes. um, Sammy Gravano, yeah. uh, you know uh, oh. Lucas, wow. you know just you put put all of that together. Then uh, uh, respect my hustle with Banky, Banky. and Ice Springs. Clarence Peter shot that. Yes, Executive Clarence shot that as well. So yeah, we so you know I so because of how futuristic Major Banks was yeah. with the music that he with was making music. at the time. Yeah. In my mind, I was like, I was like, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be my retirement plan. Oh, wow. You know, and you did. It was almost like we were years ahead of I what of where the, the industry was. You know, at the Absol- time. So absolutely. after a while, we're just like, you know what? It's been a great run. <laughs> you just packed it up. And, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because I listen to them from time to time, and I'm like, how. You know, out you know, with these songs being made in in like 2011. 11. Most of the, the songs that we had we used to be mixed by Recross's mixing engineer, literally. Oh, That's wow. how much money we we're spending at the time. Tycoon was performing our music meets runway. Oh, wow. you, you understand, you know, when the models were walking by, yeah. we give them yeah. a little, yeah, you know, divine. yeah. So it was it, it, it was, was simpler. I, know. I, I kind of feel I like know. it was it was a lot simpler mm-hmm. than this is. Pre TikTok, this is pre IG, pre everything, you know, pre everything. I know. We were just doing it from the heart. Mm-hmm. Look at you and coming all the way from Benin, yeah, just to look for ads, I know. you know, and 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 it's it's crazy, but it, it's I feel like these are like you know chapters to a really huge, huge dramatic story. book, yeah, you know, like <laughs> dramatic book where we at every point in time. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're, we're involved in So, that um, one thing that also strikes me about you is your love and your sense of family. Um, mm-hmm. So, I think, I don't know when you got married, or mm-hmm. I don't know whether you're married or that, um, you go one time or anything. I was. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Then. Um, no, 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 that's before marriage. That's before, before marriage. marriage. Then, yeah. yeah, marriage happened. Yeah. And, you know, it took a while for the kids came or anything. Yeah. But one thing about you was how. It just seemed on that front you were just grounded and we know the way people are and when they say oh what's going on uh, why don't they have kids yet or anything oh, yeah. and you know after the first kid came then almost in quick succession another one came. The second one came and so it's almost like you're one of the few people in the industry who have scandal free there's never a oh <laughs> there's a picture that leaked and it's ill for this <laughs> and a. so what has kept you grounded family wise as regards you know just knowing how to do it Oh, see, you know, when I, I till day, whenever people ask me this mm-hmm. question, I, I really can't give an outright answer. Mm-hmm. But I just, I just know that I, I never, I just never wanted a career that was smeared or a, a private life. I wanted to be able to protect my family from yeah. the chaos of of the music business mm-hmm. and the entertainment business. Um, so. I've always been very low-key. 
So I have two sides to me, and mm -hmm. I, sometimes I wonder if it's bipolarity, but <laughs> I just know that when I'm at home, everything is on pause. Okay. You know, also because the kids took a while. It took yeah. a long minute, eight yeah. years. I wow. got married 2009, May 16. Wow. Yeah, okay. and my kids came after eight years, July 1st, 2017. Wow. Well, see, it was some of the most, some of the, some of the darkest times in my life, but music, music kept me going. So all of those times I was dropping Anamachi Kwanu, if you go wound Anamachi Kwanu, I met up with Fino, I was running businesses with clients, with yeah. Sanchi I had no kids. I, wow. You know, and, and, and we're in an industry where, you know, I mean, no disrespect to the female folk, but, yeah. you know, like they kind of hand this thing to you easily, like, yeah. okay, like, Okay, let's. So, I, and and I I knew that it was going to be crazy if, for instance, I got somebody pregnant outside matrimonial home, yeah. and then we were looking for a kid. Yeah. With my, with so my, it was yeah, it was just going to be quite you know one huge. Yeah, it yeah, was just going to be a story, mess. And yeah. then and then my in laws were exceptionally great. They are like my my father in law. I don't call him my father in law. His dad. Yeah and mom so that's the way it is mm -hmm. so we're kind of like one big uh, yeah. <laughs> happy italian family <laughs> we like to sit around, around and eat yeah. and yab each other mm -hmm. and so that vibe kept me and wifey going we never we missed having kids we didn't know what the problem was but we knew the kids were coming yeah and eventually when i guess when god decided it was time to open up yeah that door i can't forget let me tell you a story so i came back from work and my wife said she, she's been feeling terrible at work she's feverish she's dead i'm like okay let's go to let's go to the hospital in the back seat of the car a station a radio station was playing banky's letter to my unborn child Featuring links. Yeah. I think links featuring Banky, Banky yeah, or or Banky featuring links, links or something. Yeah. So I just listened to that record. I'm like, this is such a great record. Why? Are they? We got to the hospital and I shazammed the song, mm -hmm. confirmed the name. Then we went in mm -hmm. and we saw the doctor. So the doctor was like, okay, your test results are out. Yeah, yeah. Your, your blood sugar is fine. This is fine. Your BP is fine. But you're pregnant. But see, I stopped hearing. But see, that was the last thing. I expected to hear because after eight years, wifey and I had just, we sank into resignation, into yeah. God you know best, do it at your own time. And, and also then, the, then wifey just breaks down and the doctor had to lock the door and say, you see that you guys don't want the child? What is it? And I'm like, we've been looking for a child for eight years. Also, it was, it was, it was such, I just, th that is why till today I am, I have to be the most fearless man in Lagos. Nothing moves me, you see, because yeah. I feel like I've seen everything. God, everything has been laid out, and mm -hmm. then God showed you everything so He could show you His power. Mm -hmm. And said, okay, so while you were busy running around, second guessing yourself, I am in charge. Yeah. And I'll do it when I want to do it. Don't move my hand. Mm -hmm. I'll write it at the right because time. Because I remember when, you know, the baby came, and I, oh, yes. I, I, they, yes. it, it almost felt like <laughs> a member of my family. Yes. Because whenever I will run into you guys on red carpet, your wife know. forever gracious and everything. I know. And I then know. it oh. seemed, and it almost like, you know what they say when God wants to bless you, it's almost, it just comes, it opens up the floodgates. It and does. before we could blink, you know, she had a sister, you know, and, and that's it. And I, you know, I look at them, Osi, and I'm like, two of you, you're ganging <laughs> up. Like, I look at them and I look at the love they have for each, each other. other yeah. My older daughter is Kaima, she's five. She's like, Dad, don't scream at Sidi, she's a baby. And that's the same thing I keep telling her, like, yeah. you must take care of your Osi, baby yeah, sister. Yeah, no. You know, so I just look at them. Osi, I can't lie. Um, those kids brought a different kind of blessing. Mm -hmm. So it just opened up so many doors. I had been rapping, making albums for years. I never got any endorsements. Oh, see, my name would get to same points, same the highest points of consideration. Last minute, they'd be like, "He's not a like a he's not like a new generation artist. He's mm -hmm. not a he's a hardcore rapper." Yeah. And then they'll lay you off. Yeah. You know. So I saw it happen a lot. Yeah. You know. And I just said to myself, maybe I wasn't even really wired for this yeah. endorsement bit. Know, yeah. Let me leave it. So many times, I was, that's why I started putting my energy into other artists, mm -hmm. into Chidema, into yeah. Fino. I remember into, even Ebola, you yeah. know, oh. like just shift, you know, shifted. That video was something else, man. Right? That video was something Shout else. Shout out to Clarence. I know that video was yeah. something else. So it's why when, when I, 
when people say stuff on social media, and I'm just like, <laughs> I, I just, that's all I just do. I'm just like, mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> but see, we wanted to shoot a mini baller in England. Yeah. We had lofty dreams. Mm-hmm. Clarence said, I'm shooting in Oxford Circus, mm-hmm. between Bond Street and Oxford Circus, convoy, six cars. Yeah. Um, Chidema will go to probably Debenhams. Mm-hmm. There'll be people to throw confetti on the floor. Yeah. Or oh, Gabos, you're coming as Akeem for coming. Mm-hmm. When we got to England and we had this dark meeting at Stratford, yeah. It's train station. The producer said, by the time we finished costing our mood board, mm. it came to about 30 grand. Pounds. Yes. Clarence looked at me and was like, what did she say? I said, exactly what you heard. <laughs> I tried to, so Clarence said, and let's go home now, because we're joking. How much did we come with? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, it's if you were here, we must mm. shoot. Yeah. Oh, see, if you see how that video was shot, if you see how that phantom was hired, yeah. if you see how the styling... <laughs> I went to Elephant and Castle, <laughs> uh, to the Jewish guy that yeah. make the, the, the suits, like handmade suits. Mm-hmm. I was buying clothes, I was buying for children. I was, you know, and it, those things helped build character. True. Because nothing really moves you. Like, if you get on set, they say the stylist is wilding out. You make a call and replace him. Yeah. If they say, so that's, that, those, those steps. Those, yeah. yeah. Those build, they build a lot of character, yeah. yeah it does. To be honest. So, yeah. uh, the same thing I tell a lot of people, or um, I think today on the show, you know, we're, we're having some issues and I wasn't phased, you know? And I'm like, because I'm just wired in different way. <laughs> In my mind, I'm just like, I just have it. It's, it's, it's a gift, but at the same time, I'm just like, not really. You never really, panic with nah. No, nah. I've because, seen you out of because all the, panic, all the Because yeah. it, it doesn't solve the problem. <laughs> now, I, in, I, Lekon, I interviewed Lekon, and one of the conversations that we had was, I paid, we paid like 18 million for a hotel mm. to do Lekon's show there about. Mm-hmm. And Lekon went to England, uh, like a, two weeks to the show mm-hmm. you know he had a book and I was like okay yeah <laughs> Couple, like a week for him to come back he calls me and says he has COVID <laughs> <laughs> I was on there I was like okay I just sat down drafted out the press release yeah. and everything and you know paid the fine that was supposed to be at a hotel because he needed to move the date and because in my mind I'm just like because worrying won't change anything yeah. why am I bothering myself for anything I know so I think you know the, a lot of things that you know I've been able to dabble into and you know do I just helps you know just build character for me to be able to face anything so in my mind I'm just like yeah, you're not that way on show so, yeah you were you performed you you, told, I think you came from you told me about yeah, the show yeah 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 I came from Fino and Olamide show yeah. and came there. And you were the, yeah. the calmest dude in the back room. Mm. Yeah. So I'm looking, everybody's wilding out. Dancers are getting confused. People are like, oh, the mics are going off. The dancers are, and you're just standing in the middle, like, mm-hmm. like you're in a bubble. Yeah. And I'm like, in, and you know, just saying it now, <laughs> it just all comes back to me. I'm like, yeah. what? In, and I just said to myself, why is Usi always mm. calm? Like, nothing ever moves this dude. No. <laughs> because I try, because when I'm calm, I'm just, I'm able to make like better. Yeah. Informed better, decisions. like better yeah. decisions and everything. So, sure. um, like I, so we, so we've seen the industry today. Um, you know, Afrobeats of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, with the new cats that are coming up and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's in a great place. Yeah. And um, I was telling someone the other day that you know I remember you know at the back of my mind like yesterday how um, the band literally was you know one of the first the first artists to make us start to see artists in a different light. Mm-hmm. Uh, the band was the guy that made us understand that artists could be superstars. Absolutely. The band was the guy that says, oh, you can actually make money off this. I remember when he said, I make 10 million in a week. Yes, see, I, I almost mean. fought. <laughs> Somebody almost fought me because in Unibet, let's look at us Lagos boys like we know too much. We know too much. See, our person go make 10 million in one week. <laughs> Who in B? <laughs> no, no. You see, but go hear this guy. We think this guy they talk. <laughs> oh, see, you they lie. And they go night class. Which guy? <laughs> you know, stuff like that and everything. And look at the trajectory and we see where it is today. This is you crazy. know, then um, the doors he opened, the new artist that you, that you know he gave rise it's to. Better. Yeah, um, but I'm looking at it from the perspective of now, where I was telling someone the other, day, I was having a meeting the other day with my GM, and I was like, it's sad how you put out a song now. I work on the radio. The lifespan of the song is four weeks. Yeah, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. So once the song clocks four weeks. Is like you, the presenter, and the listeners. Everybody's looking for what's the next big thing. Yeah. What do they need to listen to? Yeah. So it's almost like now you have more access to be able to get the music out there. Yeah. Well, right now we have songs that are not even 
standing the test of time. Yeah. Songs that, you know, um, you hear a year after, you'll be like, ah, oh, okay, that song was a jam because there's so much coming in coming right in, now. Yeah. And we, the consumers, we can't even keep up with what's going on right now. True. Yeah. True. So I think, you know, for the industry, I think it's either we need to slow down or we need to just find a way to just strike a balance. Um, okay, so obviously everything got fast tracked. Um, the guys on, on rate, the guys on television, at the television end of things will mm. tell you, videos stay two weeks and they're off. They're off the timeline, yeah. you know, because they, we've got so much coming in. Coming we can't in, get yeah. a video more than two, three weeks at best, you know. Um, it's, so it's the microwave generation. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, you know, you buy it, you pop it in, you heat it up, you eat it, you yeah. move on to the next one. Um, the way music, you even say it yourself, the way music is consumed today is absolutely different. Mm -hmm. People are spoiled for choice. Um, there's a lot of anxiety in the business. Yeah. Like artists are dropping records back and forth. They're like, no, 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 I need another one and another one and another one, you know. And the audience, so we're accepting, we look, we toss. Sometimes we look, we keep so that we can look again, again yeah. and then toss eventually, you know. So it, it's not, um, and I don't think it's best for an artist. I was speaking to an artist called Fave, who we went in the studio yesterday working and and she was like, I hate TikTok. Like I I I, I don't understand. It kills the, 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 the artistry, you know, and it, it just puts you under a lot of pressure from how you arrange the music to to how deliberate you are about writing the songs, where the hook will start, which part you're gonna chop up for a challenge. You, you understand. So mm -hmm. and but I I know one thing I I know that Life is constantly, we, it's about mm -hmm. evolutions mm -hmm. and changes. Mm -hmm. um, we have to keep evolving because if they say this is how music is consumed today and you still want to make money, you, you still have to make find a, a living, way to just key you it. must find a way to key in. Let's I pray to God that you don't make a fool of yourself, you know, trying to dance around <laughs> on the challenges and stuff. But, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, I'm not on TikTok, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a management will look at me and be like, Let's not push him too much because he's going to shout <laughs> and, and say everybody is not built for TikTok. But the truth is, so I'm trying to work harder. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to work harder in different spaces so that I can make up for that for uncomfortable that absence, conversation. Oh, yeah. Oh, she got the sauce. I was talking in the movies, did um, you know, give a fantastic rendition of yourself. <laughs> Thank Shouts you. Shouts to Kemi And I told people the other day, like, um, when I was growing up as a kid, Kemi Adetiba used to um, be one of the presenters I used to listen to on the radio. Yeah. And I've never seen anybody take such bold decisions like Kemi. Kemi used to do Sunday at the Seaside, so Kemi was on radio twice a week. Yeah. And the reason why I used to listen to Kemi was like, Kemi had a fantastic voice. And she, I tell people that there's no radio presenter in Nigeria that knows music like Kemi. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, Kemi would break down Red Man for you. Oh, and yes. In your mind, you're just like, oh, yes. okay. Kemi's so, <laughs> yeah. So, Kemi left radio. So, in my mind, I'm like, who leaves radio when you are? Like at the pinnacle. At the pinnacle. She left radio, she did TV for a while. She was like, this TV thing is not really jigging or anything. Yeah. Left TV then, went to film school. Yeah. Came back, started shooting music videos. Yeah. Shot a bunch of music videos. A bunch of or anything. Them. This music video thing, you know, the only what's going on right now. I like, you know, clearing out the box office. Yeah. So I, I just sit there and I'm just like, she's never afraid to consistently jump into deep end after deep end. Kim is fearless. Yeah. She has so, more balls than I do. She, she's, she's crazy. Obviously, know, like first I time know. I met her, she had a black t-shirt with a Wu Tang Clan logo in the middle. Yeah. I'm like, who does this now? Why are you wearing Wu wear <laughs> yeah. to a meeting? It's like, hi, Eli. And then we sat down, we spoke about King of Boys, and I ghosted her straight because. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, movies isn't part of the plan. It was part of the plan to produce. Yeah, but not to act. Not yeah. to act. Yeah. So Kim is like, you know, I built this Igbo guy in this film. Mm -hmm. Do you know that guy's for, for, that guy wasn't always called Odogu Male. Oh, for real? His name was Daddy Mac. So Daddy Mac. Name. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? What's Daddy Mac? What is Daddy Mac? <laughs> you understand? So Kim was like, okay, you know what? Go and think about it, reflect, see what you can come mm -hmm. up with. So I picked up the phone and I called my Eastern Connect. I have like a bunch of my friends that live mm -hmm. in the East. And I'm like, okay, so yo, Biz, I'm, I'm, there's a film I might be in, but I need to rename this guy. So give me 20 names of guys from the hood that have gone out to hustle and they, are, they have some crime in their CV. This, yeah. They have this, so I kind of profile the guy. 
Then this, the name started coming. Chili Bangkok, Odogu Malay, um, Ifain, 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 Thailand. You know how my Igbo brothers yeah, call themselves? Yeah. Like, like, Osi, are... Osi Kuala La Lumpur. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Osi, that's how they, that's how they talk. That's how, so you're from the point of where you but, made where money. Where you made money, yeah. From where you made know, money, that's I where know. they, yeah. Yeah, so I now, I now said, what is, then he said, Odogu Malay. I said, Odogu Malaysia, right? So he has said, hold on, we did a list. I sent it to Kemi on WhatsApp. Kemi said, what are, what kind of names yes, are these? Name. These names are so gangster. Then he said, but this, what's Malay? I said, Malaysia. He's like, Ili, that's the guy. That's the guy. We we'll, we'll chop it to Malay. And I'm like, Kemi, you down? She said, yes. I just, I just want to just change the script, put the name. Yeah. And it became Odogu Malay. And Kemi told me, listen, I watched your Bank Alert video, and that's how I, I created mm-hmm. this character. So, you know, for me, I see, I keep telling people, like, my real tests in acting came in KOB 2, mm-hmm. where I had to really, really act, I had to emote, I had, like, a Extreme range emotional, of emotions. Yeah, 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 the emotional I lost my family, yeah. I was happy sometimes, I was drunk yeah, sometimes. sometimes yeah. The first part, I was just a cool cat. Skinny. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. second part was was a test. It was a test and of acting, Kemi yeah. called me and said, listen, Ely, this is the true pass. Mm-hmm. Don't mess it up. So I went, I got an acting coach. I started drilling myself and, you know, KOB, to be very honest, changed my entire perspective. Then I started seeing people that I didn't even know I had 10 albums. Oh, see, I would go to my daughter's school, it would turn to a photo shoot till today. KOB is over a year old. I know. Like the second yeah, part. The second and one, yeah. They're like, you do go Malay, why? Oh. Why are you hiding? My husband needs to see you. He's obsessed. <laughs> Hello, dear. This is the uh, <laughs> Dogu Malay. The poor man is probably sleeping. This yeah. is Dogu Malay. Dogu from the movie King of Boys. Then the guy wakes up. He's like, oh my God, it's really him. Yeah. You know, and I looked at it, I'm like, God is really great because all, all of the guys that inspire me, hip hop wise, mm-hmm. always had this thing with, with acting or yeah. producing mm-hmm. nurses, producing content for Netflix, and yeah. try to act in belly. Yeah. Um, Jay-Z. DMX acted extensively. Yeah, Jay-Z. Ice Cube, Jay Z. Yeah. Um, Snoop Dogg, mm-hmm. you know, they produced, you know, series, in a series of content. Like, yeah. so I just keep telling myself, this is where I am probably going to retire into, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. So KOB was, was such a big blessing, okay. and shout out to Kemi over, over and over and over again. Oh, she got the sauce. When I wanted to start doing this, I wanted it to be an opportunity for people to come and just have quality. Yeah. yeah, and it's the, you've taken that same spirit on the morning show. Um, right into the show, I, I must I must commend because you are that one guy on radio that would that would ask the most introspective questions. You know, the, not the slapstick questions. You would always drag us into those qu- moments where we need to think. You know, before we we actually you know respond. So it's it's been amazing, man. Yeah. See, I'm happy you're doing this. Yeah, I, exactly. I have a little word for the sponsors. Please put money on the show. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> okay, so I want to play a game now. So the game is called Truth or Sauce. Truth or Sauce. A, oh, yeah, a yeah, little. Hero ambassador. What are no, but I drink. I drink, <laughs> but I mean, I'm well behaved. Yeah, okay. So we just asked you a couple of questions. So if it's true, you say true. Okay. Then if it's sauce, uh, you that means you don't want to answer. Okay. Then uh, you will give you a shot. So yeah. Oh then wow. Nice no, who mixed? What's in it? And who mixed it? Tequila, that's right. Oh Jesus. Nice tequila. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. So first question: Have you done a one take first before? Oh yes. Oh, okay. True. Oh yes. Have you ever missed a flight for sure? Nah. You've never had never. No refunds. <laughs> never. No refunds, man. We die there. We get on the night bus and get there. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So have you ever driven one way like No, 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 no. Okay. No, okay. and I'm heavy on traffic rules. Heavy on traffic rules. Yeah. Okay. Final one. Have you ever snuck food into the cinema? Yes. Yes, I have. So, what is that sauce? Yeah, truth. That's okay, truth. okay, that, no, that's yeah, truth. That yeah, okay. We'd buy stuff, chicken, because we know they wouldn't sell it there, and then we'd sneak it in, you know, with the baby bag. Crime, crime, crime. <laughs> <laughs> and also, last one, have you ever given a, uh, you know, done a refund for a show before? Maybe you show up. No, I haven't. As deep guy like you No, I haven't, man. I stay on it, man. Yeah, I the st- only guy that's come on the show that hasn't taken a show. That was everybody. Everybody would be like, "Sauce." Mm. <laughs> I don't want to answer that. Oh no, no. We see refunds. We're allergic to that, man. La, nah, 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 never, man. Nah, nah. We we'll shift the show. We we'll shift the show, yeah, man. But since you came, yes. You know, just as a tradition. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Somebody get ready to carry me off set. <laughs> Mm. Mm. I might just go and knock on, on the wrong door. Is this is this is this a sauce show? <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. So remember, uh, you can follow across all social media platforms as at OC Swap. Then it's uh, okay, what's your handle again? Il Bliss Goretti. Il Bliss Goretti. Il Bliss Goretti. Yes, Il Bliss Goretti. Yes, yeah, she... that's my wife's Catholic name. For real? That's where it came from, Maria Goretti. Ah. Yes. Okay. That's that's where okay. Catholic. So remember to subscribe. Is the sauce we will see on uh, you know on YouTube and also across all social media platforms as well. So it's been Il Bliss. So tonight bring on another interesting personality but still your hot seat to talk about every and anything remember keep being saucy she got the sauce Ladies and gents, it's your man Biggie in the night house, and we are coming at you with something freakier than a weekend at Beyonce's house with bags of whipped cream. More fulfilling than Obama's American dream. Big balling like Olajuwon Akeem the dream. Night house is bringing you the street scriptures with a blend of Nigel's best, the ultimate mixture, fresh beats and lyrics that paint the perfect picture. Hustlers and hustlets, these are the street scriptures.